It's a tradition since the time of the Buddha for monks who live in the forest. They have to seek out the cloth to make their robes. Because forest monks, we live very simply. All we need really is a bowl and cloth to be a monk in terms of requisites. Not very much at all, but even cloth, especially in some places where the population are quite poor. It's not always easy to come by. The Buddha's intention for Buddhist monks was that we should not be a burden on the lay community. We should try to get by with the minimum. So we have an allowance to use cast off cloth. And so traditionally monks would go wandering and find discarded cloth in rubbish piles by the side of the road, anywhere where cloth has been chucked out that no one wants. We're allowed to pick it up, take it back to the monastery, clean it and dye it and sew it together into our robes. And you'll see our robes have these kind of patched patterns, stripes, because originally they might have been made up of many individual small pieces of cloth. Another way this tradition has developed is also forest cloth also means cloth that came from corpses, wrapped around corpses before cremation. The cloth would be pulled off just before the fire was lit and hung on a tree in the forest. And monks could again come along and just pick that cloth up because it's obviously something nobody wants, take it away and make it into a robe. So that's how this tradition has been handed down to us. It's a way of supporting monks with cloth offerings. If you've ever had the chance, like I have as a monk, to wear corpse cloth, it's not a pleasant thing because every day reminds you of your own impermanence. You know, none of us live forever. We, we have to live in this world for a period of time, then we all must depart from this world. And that's why monks do this practice. It's a meditation. You wear a corpse cloth, Every day you're reminded of your own impermanence, that you're heading towards your death, so that you have a sense of urgency and become diligent and careful in your practice and don't waste your time with frivolous things because you know your, your time is limited. But over the ages we've now had the development that we live in a money economy. Say in the old days it might be a barter economy, where people might not even have used much money. But these days they do, so now you get the advent of the money tree. So what it's referring to is the support for the Sangha. So in a modern monastery there may be still bills to pay and so on, so you have a committee and people will offer funds for the bills and the various expenses of the monastery. But we shouldn't lose sight of the, the heart of the ceremony, which is actually simplicity. We don't need a lot of things to be a Buddhist monk. You don't need a lot of possessions and equipment and expensive things. The essence of our life is simplicity and renunciation.